Hello, fellow preppers. Tis I, the rumpled one. It's Friday, October 5th, year 2012. Overcast day here at the ranch. Kind of cool, but not too cold. Your uh, stuff hits the fan preparations, your plan. Now, what I'm wondering is, most people are focused on their bug out bag, and maybe their bug out location. Getting from A to B, basically safe and sound in one piece, with their family. But what I'm wondering is, is what then? Watching that new uh, TV show, Revolution, that's what triggered this thought. Because I don't think people really consider what, they, what they're going to do, say, in the medium to long term. I mean, if there's a, a scenario like an earthquake or flood, tsunami, forest fire, you leave, and then maybe you come back or maybe you don't. So that's why you have to have your plan A, plan B. You leave, you come back. That's probably plan A, but what about plan B? Have you given that any thought? Maybe you move in with relatives or friends and start up a new life, start all over again, another locale. Or what if it wasn't some big stuff hits the fan? Maybe it's just the little stuff hits the fan. Because in those big ones, everything's disrupted. But what if maybe just one thing was disrupt disruptive? Say, gasoline. I mean, this week, one day gas was 398. Yesterday it was 408. Bam, 10 cents, just like that. What if something happens and the prices just keep going up, or we don't have any supply at all? Everything else is there but the gas. What would you do in those circumstances? But. If gas prices go up that high, then of course everything on the store shelves have to go up too. They got to pay for transportation costs. Have you given that any thought? It's that medium to long term. I think most people face the short term. They they're getting that covered. They're getting that ready. They get that 72-hour bag. But what if there was just something like maybe electricity, maybe something happened, maybe a plane crash, some type of explosion, and it just knocked the grid down for four or five months. Would you stay or would you leave? Where would you go? Once again, we're back to that plan B. I mean, we're not talking about civil unrest. We're just talking about just... One one thing being disrupted, just one. Or maybe if you're living in an urban environment, maybe you have an apartment, rent a house, townhouse, condo. Something happens, and <laughs> you go to turn on the water, and there's no water. Extended period of time, three, four months. Would you stay or go? And then what? These are all things that you have to consider when you're making your plan. Because, once again, there's lots of uh, videos out there on YouTube where, you know, the preppers are focused on their 72-hour bags and, you know, they're, what they're putting in their trucks so they can bug out and, you know, their stockpiles, but... You probably can't take your stockpile if you have to go. It just wouldn't be practical. You couldn't get out 
load up quick enough. So you just have to think about these things. Don't just dismiss them because there might be low probability but if that event happens you want to be prepared for it. I know you do. There's no one right answer. You have to figure out what's going to work for you in the situation. For me, if there's a tsunami, well, I just might wind up with some beachfront property then. An earthquake, I might have to leave. Might have to leave on foot, depending on what happens to the road at the bottom of the hill. That's all possibility. That's all covered in the plan. That's why I have to, you know, my grab and go. Or maybe I just ride it out here. You know, earthquake, whether you stay or go, that that's kind of a toss-up. Because usually there's little or no warning on earthquakes. Flooding, you have some idea. Forest fire, unless it starts where you're at, you usually have some, some warning. But the main thing is, is that for you, you have to think about that middle to long term, what you're going to do. You can't figure it out once you get there. You might adjust the plan, but it's much better to have the plan intact, already prepared. So you can just reach into your pack and pull out your plan B. You've already made these preps ahead of time. Because if you think about it, if, it, if it's localized, you just have to get out of that area and then you can almost pick up. You know, you might incur some losses, but your life really wouldn't be threatened. You know, in those revolution slash Rambo slash stuff, it's the fan scenarios, you know, we're thinking it's going to be like Mad Max again, Road Warriors. But I really don't see that coming. Maybe in the cities there might be a little of that at first. Kind of saw that in Katrina. But just for your preps, really think about that medium to long term. Probably do some more videos about it. You can discuss different things. And if you guys have some good ideas, let me know. And by the way, I probably don't do this enough, but I should just say thank you to all the people that watch and send me comments and replies. And I appreciate it. I really do. So thanks once again for watching and listening and sharing some of your ideas. Because lately there's a few uh, thought-provoking ideas that uh, maybe I should do a video too on those. In the meantime, I need to prepare because if I fail to prepare today... I'm preparing to fail tomorrow.